Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Remington USD-206 bond issue. My name is Matt Regeer. I'm a Remington High School science teacher, athletic director, and the head boys basketball coach. And for this video, I'm a member of the Kids Committee, which stands for Keep Improving District Schools. The purpose of this video is to be a source of information for you so that you can make a wise, informed vote on March 5th for, the, for this bond issue. At the beginning of this process, the USD-206 Board of Education and several other, other members of the community sat down and discussed some of the challenges that face USD-206. One of the first things that we discussed was school security. We've each seen these stories in the news and had some concern at some point or another about whether our students are safe in schools. Uh, Remington USD-206 has some unique challenges in that there's three separate educational facilities in the three towns. And each of these facilities has their own parking lot, has their own office, and those offices lack some visibility and a secure entryway. So that was one of the first things that we wanted to address if we were going to do a large scale project. Each building also has its own individual challenges and I'll walk through some of those here. The elementary school in Potwin lacks a secured main entrance that is also ADA accessible. The current main entrance is here. I'm trying to outline that with a laser. Um, it's not terribly well marked and it's also not ADA accessible. The main office is centrally located in that building in this area of the school, uh, <clears throat> which impairs the visibility of the parking lot and it also allows guests that entered the, the building to have immediate access to students and staff. This facility also lacks a storm shelter to protect students and staff during violent storms. The current solution is uh, heads down in the basement hallway. Remington Middle School has its own unique challenges. Uh, the guests enter directly into the cafeteria at that facility, similar to uh, at Potwin where there's no pass-through entrance uh, through the office. That compromises the security of the students and staff. This school is moving towards a project-based learning focus, which is also a focus of the Kansas State Department of Education, and it lacks adequate space to accommodate the educational needs of these students and those projects. There's also a shortage of locker rooms at Remington Middle School that requires students uh, to change in classrooms during our home games. Remington High School has some challenges as well. The main office is centrally located in that building, which again impairs the visibility of the outside parking lot. Uh, and it also allows guests to enter directly into the cafeteria, similar to the middle school. This facility lacks a storm shelter to protect students and staff during violent storms. It lacks flexible classroom space uh, to accommodate the educational needs of project-based learning and college classes and some of the other activities that RHS students are involved in. And there's also a need for additional gym space because the uh, existing gymnasium insufficiently supports the needs of the physical education classes, the sports teams, and the other events that occur in that space throughout the year. As the Board of Education approached these challenges and looked for solutions, they first looked at simple solutions. Um, some of those are as simple as changing or adding some locks on doors, and those have been implemented already. Uh, there's other solutions that they looked at that are fairly low cost and are relatively simple, and I wanted to show you one of those here. Uh, what you're about to see is a video of a security film uh, that will be added to some of the glass in our facilities to help make them more safe. I'll go ahead and play the video without any more introduction so that you can see what uh, the board has looked at already. In the interest of time, I won't let that video play all the way out, but it takes them a minute and 46 seconds to enter that facility. Uh, this would obviously increase the safety of our buildings uh, through some of the glass doors, doors and some of the glass windows that we have, 
um, and would help to make our students and our staff more safe. There were some challenges, however, that couldn't be covered with simple fixes or without doing some sort of construction. So there's also a proposed bond issue that would help to solve and alleviate some of these sources of concern. At Remington Elementary School, the projects would include a secure and accessible entry that would be located near where the existing entry is uh, and would essentially cover some modifications. There would be a new storm shelter and music room located on that red box, and there would be air conditioning added to the existing gym. A blueprint look at that building would look like this. The main office would be relocated closer to the existing entry. Uh, that would improve visibility. It would include intruder resistant glass like you just watched in that video. There would be a new music room here that would also function as a storm shelter. And the air conditioning in the existing gym would improve usability and would actually increase security as well because these doors would not need to be open to allow for some airflow during the summer months. This office would also include a pass-through or a vestibule style office which would have guests enter into the office, pass through the secretary's desk, and then enter into the building, which would improve security for students and staff. And here's a look at the new entrance. Uh, the entrance is now much more clearly marked. There's a ramp to include ADA accessibility, and there would still be the secured entryway that we discussed earlier. At Remington Middle School, there would again be a secured entrance added. There would be an expanded special education area, a new media center and library in this red area here. <clears throat> that would be connected to the tech lab. There would be availability for independent study and some opportunities for curriculum redesign activities to take place in that space. There would be a project-based learning focus on all of the projects in that building, and there would also be air conditioning added to the existing gym. A blueprint look at that building. Uh, the main vestibule office would look like this. There would be minimal changes here, but it would include a pass-through or a vestibule style so that guests had to enter into the office before they entered into the building. The new media center and library would be, be constructed here and would be focused on project-based learning and independent study. The existing library north of the gymnasium would be repurposed for a special education area and two locker rooms that could be used for sporting events and then air conditioning would be added to the current gymnasium, which would again improve usability. At Remington High School, some similar improvements. A new secured entrance would be added, a new storm shelter for that building. There would be a maker space or flexible classroom that would double as that storm shelter. This would be used for testing, for independent study, for career exploration, and for some redesign activities as uh, Remington High School undergoes the uh, redesign program through KSDE. There would be a community wellness center included in this building project with a walking track, a weight room, and a fitness room. There would be a competition gym that would allow for sub-state basketball and volleyball tournaments and allow more space for our wrestling tournament. And there would also be air conditioning added to the existing gym in this area. The blueprint of that building would look like this. The main office would be relocated to the west along with the main entryway. That would improve visibility again. Uh, it would allow for intruder resistant glass to be placed on the doors and windows of that area and there would be a vestibule office so guests would come into the building, go through the office before entering the rest of the building. There would be a new multi-purpose classroom in this green area that would also function as the storm shelter. There would be multiple uses for that. Uh, including the testing, project-based learning, uh, and redesign activities as I discussed in the last slide. There would be a new physical education classroom, competition gym, community wellness center uh, with a walking track around the top of the gym, and fitness equipment in these purple areas. This green area would be a wrestling and multi-purpose room that could be used for wrestling practices, um, indoor practices for outdoor sports, uh, such as batting cages, um, indoor track practice, indoor football activities for when weather does not permit. There would be a concessions area located here for outdoor sports so that patrons don't need to walk all the way around those new facilities into our cafeteria where our current concessions are located. 
And then there would also be air conditioning added to the existing gymnasium to improve usability during warm weather. Here's a look at the outside of uh, the proposed outside of Remington High School. Uh, the gym would be located here along with the wrestling room and weight room. And then the main entrance would be under this awning here. The next question that comes up with any bond issue is how much is it going to cost? The proposed bond issue is for $9.975 million, and that would cover uh, the project costs. Um, interest rates right now are estimated at 4.5% for the 22-year bond. Those are near 50-year low levels, um, and those are relatively conservative estimates. These low interest rates make the cost of repayment of a current bond issue as, about as affordable as it could be. What you see in this chart is a tracking of our assessed valuation growth since 2007-2008. There's an average increase here of approximately 4% per year. So USD 206 assessed valuation has been growing by about 4% per year. But to be conservative, the estimated growth in tax base is only 2% per year as we've uh, estimated costs of this bond issue. USD 206 does have existing bonds outstanding with a remaining balance of $5.025 million. These bonds are scheduled to retire in 2030 and require a levy of 7.517 mils in the current budget. The plan of finance at this point is to wrap the proposed new bond payments around the existing bonds so that one consistent mill levy will retire all bonds. The estimated required mill rate for that wrap structure is 15.43 mils. As we're currently paying 7.517 mils, the net tax increase would be 7.9 mils. Uh, we've worked with George K. Baum and Company, which is a, a bond sales group, and they have assured us that this is without question the most cost-effective way to pay off these bond uh, costs. Here's a look at some of the impacts on you as, as a patron of USD 206. Uh, as a reminder here, a mill is $1 of tax on each $1,000 of assessed valuation of property in the district. So if you own a $100,000 home, the estimated assessed valuation is $11,500. And with those added 7.9 mils, your yearly tax increase would be $90.85 or $7.57 a month. You can see figures there for a $75,000 home, a $50,000 home. For commercial properties and uh, farm properties, you can see estimates there as well. Although I would encourage you to check with your own tax uh, consultant or look at your tax statements for more specific uh, numbers since some of those properties are taxed a little bit differently. Hopefully this video has given you enough information to at least begin making an informed decision. There's far more information on our Facebook page and you can find that by searching for USD 206 bond issue or USD 206 kids. Uh, there are many documents there that are available to you and you're always more than welcome to ask questions of anyone that's a part of the kids committee. Some deadlines for you to be aware of. The voting registration deadline has actually passed. It was February 12th, uh, but the advanced voting ballot application deadline is February 26th if you want to do advanced voting ballots for that. The advanced voting in person deadline is March 4th, and the advanced voting by mail deadline is February 26th, so, so that's coming up relatively soon. Vote day is March 5th, and we hope that with this information, you feel able and confident to get out and vote. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let a Kids Committee member know. Go vote!